what are the evolutionary benefits of a person becoming ideologically possessed? What are the evolutionary benefits of a person becoming ideologically possessed? Well, I don't really know how to answer it, but it looked like a fun no, place I, to end I, I, think, I think we can do it. Mm -hmm. I think the point is, this makes the assumption that ideological possession is an adaptation in some circumstances. Right. Which I think it probably is, mm -hmm. right? There's probably... It, let, Let's talk about the question of wanderlust. Wanderlust? Wanderlust. Mm. Okay. Your population fills up an environment, right? There's a question about whether or not in that full environment to become good at competition and eke out a living where there's no free resource or new opportunities because everybody's exploiting everything and everything's been figured out, right? And then there's a question of, am I better off doing that or am I better off heading off across the horizon, maybe dying because there's nowhere to go or because I'll head in the wrong direction and I will end up drowning. Um, but maybe I'll find a place that isn't full of competitors, right? So the point is, it is adaptive to think about the possibility of heading out and attempting to innovate something new when the opportunity that, the competing opportunity is just not very likely to yield uh, any any way forward mm -hmm. or any productive way forward. You could tread water at best. Um, so the point is, you know, sometimes when we joke about why did why would anybody have stopped here? This is such a hard environment to live in. Why would anybody have stopped here? Not here. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the answer is that's not how it works. People go until they find a good opportunity. They fill that place up and then they backfill the places that are possible to live in, but are much harder to live in, right? So it's not- Yeah, every place that people live wasn't inherently a first choice. Right, and so the point is you keep going until it stops getting better, right? And then mm -hmm. you're like, hey, this is the place. And then the point is your, the fact that you're now competing there makes that place slightly worse. And so the place fills up from the delightful opportunity to the marginal opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so suppose that instead of geographically moving, what you do is you move to a new way of viewing the world. Let's say you go from hunter-gatherer to farmer, right? And then the point is, oh, well, actually this farming thing, you know, it's really got something to it. You know, you, it, it does take a lot of work and you got to pay attention to the patterns, but then, you know, you invest, you know exactly where to go gather your foods and, right? So the point is, what you don't want is to, well, I wonder if there's something even better than farming. Well, I don't know. Why don't you do it for 5,000 years? And then at the <laughs> point that you've exhausted that opportunity, then go look for some new thing to do. So the point is the ideological possession yeah, might constant be... Constant change isn't a value. Right. Change for... Yeah. You don't want... You know, at the point you've landed in the delightful place where you have no competitors, you don't want your wanderlust to get you moving somewhere new because you're going to take a great opportunity and you're going to throw it away for something that is almost certainly worse. Right. Yeah, and actually, a lot of, a lot of moderns do have that. It's sort of a a, <clears throat> a too generally applied desire to see what's over the horizon. Yep. Well, right. You can get addicted to that mm -hmm. thing, and in fact, maybe that there maybe the point is you are that morph, right? Your civilization shouldn't move after you've found someplace great, mm. but maybe the point is your purpose the is to always. Shaman. Yeah, the, rather, yeah, the, the geographic the, the scout. rather than the psychedelic shaman. Right. So as an individual, it might be a valid strategy. Mm -hmm. But the idea, you know, you don't come back to the camp at night and say, this place is great, but let's just keep going, see if there's another even greater place. The point is, you guys stay here. I'll go look for some greater place. But the mm -hmm. point is, ideological obsession or whatever the... Capture? I don't remember what it said. I, I've clicked it already. Um, it's gone. An obsession with a particular viewpoint might be the correct reaction to an innovation that has unlocked something amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Where the experiment has yet to fill in the container and to discover all of the possibilities that have been unleashed. And so the point is, you know, uh, the West, for example, right? The West figured out that if you put aside your racial differences and you collaborate with people on the basis that they have things that you don't and you have things that they don't and you just sort of see where it goes the point is actually that's magic right it results in all kinds of innovation and it results in a, a safer 
more peaceful, more delightful, more fascinating, more fun yep. world. And so the point is, you know, you get ideologues who are, you know, absolutely obsessed with freedom, mm -hmm. right? And maybe they even miss the point about the fact that freedom does eventually run into competing uh, concerns. But while you're still benefiting from it, you might as well be obsessed with it because the point is really, hey, we've got this new tool. It is producing dividends for us, you know, nonstop. Mm -hmm. So the point is, let's not deviate from that tool until it begins to show signs that it's run its course. Mm 